This is Kelso Sturgeon. Thank you very much for tuning in to another day at Kelso Sturgeon's College of Advanced Handicapping. As I noted yesterday, in case you missed the show, we've done Handicapping 101 for the past year, and I think it's time to move on to uh, bigger and uh, more interesting and more profitable things. So for the next year, uh, you will be attending Kelso Sturgeon's uh, College of Advanced Sports Handicapping, and I think in the process I can give you some tremendous edges uh, to win, to make money, to manage money. Uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to all the aspects of the handicapping process that are, begone, that are beyond uh, what the average individual knows or understands. Handicapping is not as simple as it looks. It's a very complicated process driven by dynamics that uh, uh, most of you have never heard of. And uh, we're going to discuss all those things. And in the end, my goal is that you will have a complete picture, what I call a classical overview of the world of handicapping, and you'll understand how betting lines are uh, married to the talent of teams, and how betting lines in some sports can be manipulated, and others they can't be. Uh, and in the process, I'm going to teach you how to zig and zag and duck and dodge and still find your ways uh, to winners. First, let's get a little news out of the way. Uh, as you know, the NBA playoffs, uh, the championship round begins in Miami on Tuesday night. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks at the Miami Heat. Miami is a five-point favorite in that game uh, with a total of 188. If you want to uh, bet uh, the winner of the best of seven series, you've got to lay a minus 190 with Miami. Uh, you get a plus 160 with Dallas. And as I noted yesterday, I want to repeat because I think it's very important, uh, just how underrated uh, uh, is Dallas. The Mavericks are 17-2 and two against the number in the last 19 games. An amazing figure that I have not seen in the NBA in years. Maybe I've never seen it. I don't recall when it happened. But how can a team of the talent of the Dallas Mavericks be 17-2 and two in their last 19 games? Against the number, that's as powerful as it gets. Make of it what you will. I'm not recommending you bet on Dallas. I'm just saying that uh, uh, they, this is a team that certainly is uh, underrated. You know, I want to discuss baseball uh, today, but before we uh, go into that, I want to point out what's been going on in my two baseball clubs. You know, in with my best bets baseball club, I have not lost a single game since uh, uh, last Saturday. And uh, gone 6-0 and in that time frame, and if you bet just $10 per unit, you won $795 this week. Uh, as for my personal best club for high rollers, those betting uh, uh, $100 per unit went to 5-0 and and have uh, shown a profit of $10,625. I didn't make those figures up. This is what happened. So if you bet $10 per unit as a best bet club member, you won $795 this week. If you bet uh, $100 per unit as a member of my personal best high rollers club, you're up $10,625. Uh, now I want to get into how I handicap baseball. You know, a lot of people uh, look at baseball and uh, uh, seem to be a little bit confused when it's not quite that uh, not quite that difficult. You know, the edge you have in baseball is very real. All you have to do is win the game. It doesn't matter whether you lay a minus 120, a minus 140, a minus 180, or whatever. The only thing you have to do is win. And if you uh, if you win, you win your bet. There's no point spreads involved. Uh, and uh, as I pointed out before, in baseball there are many games you have a 75% chance to win. In football and basketball your chance is never better than 50-50 unless you have the ability to analyze numbers better and to dig far deeper into the, uh, uh, into the uh, abilities of teams as compared to the betting line. Now in betting baseball, I'm just going to lay it out. Here's exactly how my day begins. First of all, I examine all the starting pitchers uh, at two different websites on the internet. Uh, one is Major League Baseball. Uh, you can go there and, and see for yourself. And it gives me some idea of the current form. Uh, then I analyze each pitcher and uh, determine how he's doing now. Not two weeks ago, not a month ago, but how's he doing now? Is he staying in a ball game for uh, six or seven innings and uh, uh, maintaining a, a decent earned run average? Or all at once is he lasting four or five innings and uh, his, uh, his ERA is falling apart. I just want to know the current form of the pitchers because pitchers go in cycles too. They up, 
down, up, down. And and usually you see a pitcher who's won five or six games never win the sixth or seventh game. It just doesn't happen. Uh, occasionally, uh, maybe, but uh, there's no no guy can keep climbing the ladder. He's going to reach a peak and he's going to fall off and then he'll go right back up to that peak again. So I must know the current form of pitchers. Then uh, I get on the internet and I, I monitor... Uh, uh, 35 different websites and I examine the betting lines on all those websites. Now there are two websites, uh, uh, two sports books that uh, uh, have their odds on, on, the, uh, on the internet that book uh, the heaviest action of all in Major League Baseball. And so here's what happens at those two places. Uh, let's say that, that Philadelphia is a minus 120 uh, against the New York Mets. Now and it's pretty general across the board with these 35 uh, uh, different uh, uh, clubs uh, uh, or different teams. And all at once at these two places that book tremendous sums of money on baseball, uh, Philadelphia is not a minus 120. It's a minus 140, a minus 160, and that is an eye-opener for me because it tells me that's where the big money went. And you could run the schedule from top to bottom and see the discrepancy between the average of the 35 and then what is being bet uh, and at what number on these two major websites. So I have some insight going in as to where the big money uh, has already been bet. And it, it's, it's an edge. The big money is uh, not 100% uh, uh, accurate. In, in football, I would say that, uh, uh, that it's right, well I know, I did a study, it's right 50% of the time. It's right 50% of the time in basketball. It's right 80% of the time in baseball. And that's the reason that I'm uh, 6-0 and with my best bets club and, and uh, five and one with my personal best club over the last uh, uh, last week. So start with the pitchers. Now I examine uh, uh, the discrepancy in betting lines to determine where the big money has gone. That gives me a built-in edge. And then I want to know the current form uh, of a team. Is the team eight and two in its last ten games? Is it two and eight? I mean, you can't ignore this particular. Uh, uh, aspect uh, is a team uh, on a seven game winning streak or a seven game losing streak and let me tell you something there's a lot of people who say that a team on a seven game winning streak is an automatic go against and a team uh, that is 0-7 is an automatic team to bet on uh, there's no statistical data to support that you know every game must be handicapped today it must be handicapped indiv individually and within the facts of that game today so current form is extremely important I'm also very much aware of how teams play at home you know Milwaukee's almost unbeatable at home there are other teams that can't win on the road and it, these things all become uh, part of the handicapping process I weight this all in uh, it's not every aspect of handicapping carries the same weight either but it's one of these things that that current form of the team overall. Now, another thing, I also determine how what the team's batting average is for the season and in the last three or four games. If a team is batting 275 for the season and in the last three or four games uh, has, bat, uh, has batted 201, uh, I know they're in a bit of a hitting slump. I want to know that uh, because teams, uh, hitters are just like pitchers. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. Some are very steady. Most are uh, uh, very much in a uh, up and down cycle for the entire season. So I, I don't bet against weak hitting teams, period. Uh, you know, a weak hitting team or a team that's uh, going through uh, a, a series of games where its batting average is off 50 or 60 points, I've got to stay away from that team until it recovers. Now really that's the basics of handicapping baseball. You put all these elements together and you'll find that when you have the outstanding pitcher uh, going against a mediocre pitcher or a, uh, uh, a less than average pitcher or an average pitcher. You have a 75% edge right there to win the ball game. Now you chip your way through these other elements, uh, uh, weighing current form, weighing hitting, uh, weighing ERAs of pitchers, and you'll take that 75% edge and you'll push it up to 80 or 90. And it does work, believe me. And if you're not betting baseball, uh, shame on you. It's a profit center that uh, is, is never ending. <clears throat> and as I said, the edge you have. All you have to do is win the game. I know a bookmaker in Philadelphia who, who laughs uh, in baseball. He, take, he takes action. He doesn't necessarily want to, but he takes it just so he'll make sure he doesn't lose his football and basketball customers. He said Philadelphia is a town loaded with people who bet the New York Yankees. 
And so if the New York Yankees are a minus 120, he posts them at a minus 200. And believe it or not, people lay the 200. And I said, well, how do you come out? He said, I'll still lose. The point that I'm making is you can't manipulate that number in, in, in baseball uh, as you can in football and basketball. All a bookmaker can do is up it. But it doesn't matter if a team's going to win at minus 120, they're going to win at minus 200 also. I don't recommend laying the big wood. I seldom do. Uh, uh, minus 170 is at the far end of uh, where I would go. Uh, I use underdogs. I use favorites. <clears throat> and just remember that there's winning baseball on this site every single day and toll free in my office 1-800-755-2255 I take all major credit cards I'm on a tremendous run in baseball I intend to stay on that run and keep in mind the NBA playoffs begin on Tuesday night I will be giving complete coverage uh, of the playoffs and I intend to go out with a bang thank you very much for tuning in we'll be back here uh, next Friday uh, for another class in Kelso's uh, <coughs> College of Advanced Sports